All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Popcorn Square. I am your host, Kage, with Neff and Buttons. And today we are talking about the journey to Yavaga or Alien Romulus. Uh, we all saw it recently. Uh, we all enjoyed it. Um, so we're going to dissect that today uh, and discuss this. Um, the reviews for this film have been generally pretty positive. Um, especially com in comparison to uh, Covenant, I think we can all agree it was quite bad, quite, quite bad. Um, I'm going to say that, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed it more than Covenant. There was, um, there was some tie-ins. Uh, I don't know how far we want to go in spoiler territory, but there was a strong mention to another film uh, that I was not expecting. Um, and that kind of brought it together for me. Um, I'd say my only criticism was a little bit too much uh, face hugger for me. Like I wanted to see a new, something new, something new. Um, maybe a, like a, a, ver a new variant of the alien or something like that. Or give me some, give me some new well, alien they lore. They definitely gave you a variant. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. We'll we'll get into that. We definitely got a variant. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I just want to kind of go around the table and see what you guys thought individually um, about this. So yeah, uh, overall, I gave the movie an eight and a half. Probably my second favorite movie of the year. Went okay. in with pretty high expectations, but nothing too crazy. Uh, you know, we knew a lot of information going into this film. Fade Alvarez, huge fan of Alien, uh, even huge fan of Alien Isolation as well. Uh, we knew that he oh, was yeah. going to be using a lot of practical effects, so that was very exciting. You know, they wanted to get back to the roots of Alien. Um, you know, if no one has seen this film, go watch it. Not going to give away too many spoilers. We will give up some details, but I think visually it's the most impressive movie we've gotten this year. There is some CG that I was not a fan of. Um, I don't really know why they went that direction with it. Definitely could have changed that. Um, what else about it? Like I said, I'm not trying to give away too many spoilers here. Um, movie runs about two hours. Um, if you've seen Alien before, just know that this movie plays like Alien. It's not one of those quick starting films. It's not like Aliens where you kind of get into the action pretty quick, right? Mm -hmm. They give you a nice solid build up. You obviously get some callbacks and then you get into the action. Once the action gets started, it's pretty good. Um, you know, obviously there's some nitpicks here and there. There's things they could have done differently, but overall, I thought it was a pretty good experience. Um, I think, and this is how I felt about Deadpool and Wolverine. I'm content with watching that film once in theater, and it's not that it doesn't have any rewatchability or replayability, but I just felt like I got everything I needed in that one experience. Mm -hmm. Would I recommend someone to watch it twice if they were a fan of it the first time? Sure, because there's certain movies that you have to watch on the big screen, or you oh, yeah. don't really get that full encapsulation of the scale within the film, and it's just a different experience actually having that big screen. Some movies you gotta watch like that, Dune yeah. is one of them. You gotta yeah, watch that you. on the big screen. You watch it at home, good film, but it's not as impactful unless you're in a theater. And obviously everybody here likes the theater experience and going to the cinema, so you know that's really why we're here because we actually like going to the cinema. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one of those films I feel is in that category. You need to watch this on the big screen. And then after you watch it on the big screen, sure, you can stream it at home or whatever. But definitely going to be buying this film. Um, and yeah, I highly recommend. We're definitely going to touch some more details of the film, but I want to pass it over to Buttons and she can give her quick thoughts. And then we'll all kind of just come back and commune on this whole film. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I... I enjoyed the film. Uh, I actually have seen it twice now. Um, saw it with a group and then uh, saw it with a family. So it's definitely got one of those. Um, I, I will agree with with Neff. Obviously, when you watch it the first time, is going to be the best uh, because everything's new and you know fresh. Uh, watching it the sec second time. Uh, some of the, the jump scares and things like that weren't as impactful because I already knew to expect them. So doesn't, again, it doesn't impact the rewatchability really unless you're into the movie for that purpose. Like if you want something to, you know, to kind of give you a little bit of a scare or, 
or I mean, I'm very susceptible to it. You know, everybody made fun of me in the theater because yes, I, I am one of those people that when it jumps out at you, I react. So not to the extreme of where I'm screaming or anything, but but visibly people are like, oh, somebody's getting scared. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I, I do recommend it. And, you know, for all of those... <laughs> For all of those people who don't watch it in the theaters, uh, you have my sympathies. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, I gave it an eight. I feel like that's fair. There's definitely, you know, again, I I'm, I'm judging it just based off of the previous movies, which, you know, I know we'll go into a little bit more detail, but this is an in-between Alien and Aliens so it's, it's, but it's a standalone, so it's good. So if you haven't seen the other two, you're going to miss some Easter eggs, um, but you don't have to have seen the other two movies recently to still enjoy this one. You're just going to pick up on some of the other little things, the tie-ins that made it a little bit more enjoyable for the fans. You know, the, the, the diehard fans who have seen these, you know, and rewatched, uh, you know, rewatched them before this movie came out. They definitely gave it a little bit more fan service um, in here, which, you know, I actually heard some complaints about, but personally, I enjoyed it. I, I like being able to catch the little things that are in there where you're like, ooh, did you see that? Or, oh, did you catch that? Um, so for me, it, it makes the movie a little bit more enjoyable because it's also engaging, you know, my visual awareness, you know, to to be able to pick up on those little cues um, and things like that. I think it's neat. I, I always enjoy that in those movies. This one, visually, yes. I do think that they did a great job. Uh, as Neff mentioned, there's a couple questionable <laughs> CG choices that they made. Um, but I don't think it was overall super distracting. Um, I mean, especially watching it the second time, I think in my head I built it up as way worse than it was. Watching it the second time, it wasn't as bad. And I say that because I do rewatch movies. Like I will go back and, you know, see older films that I really enjoyed and look at what's compared to this one. I will say, I do think visually one thing that was really great about this movie was they tried to make it look like it was bridged in between the first two Alien movies. A lot of the designs, a lot of the computers and things like that, um, even even some of the weapons and um, different uh, uh, things that they were using, tools and stuff, you know, go back to what they used in those first two movies. So that was kind of a neat little throwback as well to sit there and go, oh, okay, I see what they're doing here. Mm -hmm. um, so, and it, and it lends to the believability, um, which was one of my biggest things with like Prometheus, which was like, okay, this is supposed to be happening well before, but everything's so much more advanced. And that's because of the, you know, increase in our uh, CG development from back in the 80s when the original movies uh, were coming out. So um, this, it actually made it feel like it could have actually happened. But visually speaking, especially with uh, towards the end of the film, um, a lot of what they were doing, again, don't want to give any spoilers, but they, you could definitely see the advancement in our own technology visually to make it look so great on screen. Um, without you know, our advancements that we have now, you wouldn't have been able to make it look as beautiful and believable as it, as it was um, back in the 80s. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, like, you know, just to kind of piggyback on what Buttons was saying, uh, I thought, you know, talking to a bunch of other people and seeing comments on the Internet, things like that, um, a lot of the criticism, it really just shows me how much people don't know about Alien. So if you don't know much about Alien, you need to go rewatch Alien 1979, right? And you can watch Aliens as well. I'd actually told Kage that I thought maybe this one would connect more with Aliens, obviously because it's uh, 30 years after the Nostromo events, but then 20 years before the events on Hadley Hope. So I thought maybe there'd be more of a connection there. But I noticed while watching the movie, this is really Alien 2.0. Uh, to be honest, because it literally follows the whole, um, I guess you want to say, the whole, um, um, it's like the same recipe, basically, mm -hmm. right, for why you liked Alien. Like we said, slow, suspense, uh, and then it builds up to, obviously, more than one twist and more than one 
monster, not giving away too much, but there's a bunch of other things that it actually shows you. Rather than Alien, you really just have Big Chap in there who is the main Xenomorph. That's really all you kind of have with the first Alien. Now in Aliens, obviously if you guys have seen that, it's probably the most popular one out of the whole franchise, uh, you actually get more action. So when James Cameron was writing that, he implemented that because he didn't want to make a remake of Alien, obviously one hard thing to do and James Cameron likes to push the envelope so he actually added the action into that uh, environment and so you kind of see that more in this film rather than you see an alien so there's things that you know this movie does like alien and things that it does like aliens so it's really kind of like a blend and to be honest you can see how they pull together uh, the whole uh, I guess film through all the other films so like Button said some people have a problem with that I didn't really have a problem with that too much but I can see why someone would say, well, you know, let's maybe take it in a different direction, maybe something we haven't seen. Problem with that is when they did that, you guys hated Prometheus. Most people didn't like Prometheus, so you can't have it both ways. If they do something new, you gotta respect that they're trying to do something new and you have to accept it. You can't say, oh, I want something new because you're doing too much fan service, and then when they try something new, you shit on it. Yeah. Right? So. You know, like I said, most of the criticisms I see are nitpicks. Mm -hmm. Doesn't hold any weight. If you debate anybody that knows anything about Alien, none of those nitpicks hold any weight whatsoever. And they can all be logically explained. Yeah. Uh, but anything you want to add before we move on to the next topic of the film? Kage? Uh, yeah, so I gave it, uh, I gave it a 7 mm -hmm. out of 10. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. I just... I was expecting a little bit more. We've been in the Aliens franchise for... 45 years. 45 years. So I was kind of hoping to see maybe a new variant. Like, show me something new. Show me something new. When you watch an Aliens movie, you what's your bread and butter, okay? You have a bunch of people on a ship, and they slowly get picked off one by one. Um, you start off showing face huggers, then you start showing the aliens. You might show a, a, a super monster like a, the queen, for example, at the end of Aliens, you know. Um, and I was like, okay, it's following the same beep. Show me something. When you say new, do you mean like a different monster? Maybe a different monster. Like show, show me a variant. Say the humans were experimenting and there's this, there's this one. That would have thrown me for a loop. Um, or like... Because you got to remember, this is between... To me, the there's first... new things, but the ideas are new. That's fair. That's fair. This is between a uh, Alien and Aliens. Right, right, right. And what you can say was, if you did put something new in here, and let's say the ship blown up, that's why we don't see it in the other movies. Like, just something like that, for example. Um, but, yeah, I think it was... I liked it. I just wanted... I guess I was hoping for something new. Um, this movie looked great the bad cg uh i won't say anything more than this but it's kind of related to a character okay remember uh does everybody remember when um we got a lot of examples but henry cavill didn't want to shave his mustache so they had to edit it out that type of thing when you look at somebody you're like that looks off it's kind of like that's the exper uh, experience that i'm kind of alluding to kind of sounds like that but um, but yeah, like I I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, again, definitely better than uh, Covenant, and I do like the tie-ins with other movies. I did go and see watch Aliens before going into this, mm -hmm. um, and Neff is right. Yeah, it's definitely tied more in to the first film. Mm -hmm. um, I did I did see like you kind of know like you watch Aliens and you know what this is leading up to. Aliens is like. There's a colony that goes dark, and um, people have stopped hearing from them. And obviously, something went wrong. Obviously, it was related to the aliens. So this is right before that, where they're trying to, like, okay, what's going on with the colony? So fills in that gap. But it was a, I think it was a good movie. Definitely one of the better films of this year, because as we all know, For 2024 sure. has 
really been a hodgepodge. <laughs> and I thought the acting was really good. I oh, thought the yeah. acting was really Definitely. good. Now, I don't, I don't think it's Academy Award winning, but I think it was sufficient enough to push the plot forward, and it was believable. They and I actually like how they – Yeah, I really yeah. like how they actually, you know – uh, develop more in this film than we've seen in other films before, and they actually develop enough to where you're interested in the two main characters, which are Rain and Andy. I don't think that's a spoiler, but you're actually invested in them towards the end of the film. But yeah, I think I agree with everybody at this table. Pretty solid film. Uh, the budget, $80 million. Currently, the box office is sitting at $225.4 million. Yeah pretty good World, we already got global, a two and a half x there mm -hmm. about to be a three yeah. x uh i don't know if it's going to do four x i don't think that's going to happen typically after the first two weeks you start to see that dip well actually yeah, i so. think uh you know I was but reading. that i think people did actually go back and rewatch the film so i mm -hmm. think that kind of helped it jump up yeah there. i think i think we you know i think we can agree that you know there was a lot of buzz going into the first weekend mm -hmm. of this film so um you know, I think that that hit really hard that first weekend, uh, and I and I did remember seeing an article that talked about the second weekend was not as uh, big of draw. So, you know, we did theorize that that was what was going to happen. So with first this. weekend, it made a hundred and ten. Right. So all the fans are going to go right. out and see it that very first weekend because they're jazzed, and then you know everybody else is like the residual like. Oh yeah, let's go give it a try. Or like you said, maybe the ones who are going back a second time to go watch it again, um, or word of mouth. You know, like oh yeah, I saw it. You should go see it too because it was great. Yeah. So um, you know, I I don't think it. Uh, the alien movies have always been like not for everybody, and you know, horror movie in general, you know, are not for everybody. You know, they're obviously not kid friendly. They're obviously going to be something that, you know, isn't always going to be a draw for like the older generations and, and everything else. So, um, you know, I think the first weekend hit the largest group of people uh, possible and we're just going to see it taper off from here. Um, so again, I, I agree with Neff. You're not going to really see a whole lot more build. Maybe on the global scale, perhaps you'll get a little bit uh, higher draw just because, you know, our, our international sales tend to, to bump these movies up a little bit more. Um, I think know, this movie can countries. get to probably 290. Right, just under three? Probably yeah. just right under three. Yeah. I feel like that's I mean, a, there's I feel really like that's nothing else out to really kick it out of this spot mm -hmm. other than Beetlejuice. Right. And that's a week and a half away. Mm -hmm. Like, so Gosh. it could do 80. It, I think it could do 280, 290. If yeah. it hit 300 flat, I would not be surprised seeing how it's at 225 already. Yeah. And, uh, you know, moving moving into our next topic that we were going to oh, discuss. Actually, which... I want to hear what Kage thinks about this. Oh, okay. This. Yeah, go What ahead. do you think about the budget and box office? I 80 think... million, 225 right now. What you thinking? I think that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I think that's pretty good because um, it's been a while since we've had an alien, oh, I should say, a good Aliens film. Mm -hmm. Like, you talk to a lot of people from hardcore fans to casuals, and they all say the same thing. They said they tend to like Prometheus better. They kind of blotted Covenant out of their minds. I could barely tell you parts in that movie. I only saw it once. Prometheus? I saw it more than once in theaters, and then I bought it. So we can talk a lot about that. But, sure. but, um, but yeah, no, I think they did a really great job. And one of my favorite things about the film was uh, practical effects. Hollywood, can we awesome. please get more of that? Can we please get more of that? Because got to send you the behind the scenes video. Please do. They're, like you got to understand, you could CG the crap out of this movie. You, the technology is there. You could have done it. You could have done it, but you didn't, and I'm proud of you. Well done, director. <laughs> like, like, you know, because back in the day, you had a guy in a suit doing, doing the alien thing, and um, they had the full built sets. When they're blowing up stuff, they're really blowing up stuff. Like, I, from an artistic perspective, I really appreciate and that. And that's what you're not going to see too much of anymore, the use of practical effects on this level. And for $80 million... You, it, to me, it looks like it costs about 150 to 200 million, honestly, just mm -hmm. from a visual aspect, um, especially with those in orbit scenes of the Renaissance station yeah. as uh, Corbalon 4 gets there uh, in the beginning of the film. And even even the beginning, how it opens up, you know, with mm -hmm. the wreckage there. For sure. But yeah, 
I think it was great. What do you guys think about the future of Alien after this? Invested in Rain and Andy? Uh, I, really, I am. I want to see what happens when they get to this new planet, if they do. If they do it, they, they, they got to do it better. Because they still got the black goo. You're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Because, well, hmm, hold on, hold on. How would they? How does that spin? I, I honestly, I well, honestly don't. We have don't, aliens. We know I, what, the, what the sequel I is. I don't. I don't think they're ever gonna make it to Ivaga, guys. I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's actually honestly, like a that's dark. Uh, well, it, 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 it and it, the only reason why I say that is because one of the things, and and I do, basically, there you have Wayland's uh, Corporation, right? And we already know that it's all about what's best for the company. So. Yep. You know, in the mind of this, he, uh, or they allude in, in the movie that there is contact, that this is a Wayland, you know, station when they go to it. Okay. It's a Wayland station. It's got mother. All right. Without going too far into it, they are going to communicate with each other. They're going to find out about Rain and Andy. And they're going to go try and get them before they can get to Ivaga. That's my theory. I don't think that they'd let them get away. Now, to be fair with this station, it was kind of odd that it was, that they all thought it was abandoned uh, as like a relic. That's what they kind of make it like, oh yeah, we're just going to go up to this abandoned looking station or ship and get what we want from it. Like that's Mm -hmm. the way it's set up for this movie. And you know, with as much as in the previous movies we've seen where, you know, the corporation is all about pushing the boundaries of science and, you know, especially in regards to the aliens, like, you know, experimenting and and trying to find a way uh, to use, um, you know, information or harvest, I guess you could say, uh, you know, the technology and any biological... um, Uh, properties and things that they can find so I mean this one's kind of set up to that extent to uh, demonstrate you know just how far the corporation is willing to go Uh, and for my opinion if there was any kind of communication then it's going to put a big old marker on uh, the ship the Corbin that they're going to go try and track it down especially if they already know where they had wanted to go originally yeah I like that theory there. So I mean it would be it would be interesting to kind of see like an interception just like just like how we saw it happen with Ripley, you know, where they they tried to clone her uh in order to to get back in touch with the the alien. Yeah, in resurrection. Um, in resurrection. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I can kind of see it almost playing out in that sense where it's another ship that comes after them and they get intercepted on the way to Ivaga and then it could happen the same thing. You guys don't know what you're playing with. Oh no. You know, and then chaos ensues and right, right, and you right. have another situation similar to, to resurrection. I can see that. I happening like that idea. Easily. I also like the idea that they get there and it's not what they think it is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm leaning more towards that. <laughs> Would you like to see that? I'm down. What was what was the place called in uh, Mad Max? As far as what the the place that they were all trying to get to, the green place. It's yeah. literally called the green place. Oh, okay, yeah. the green place. So yeah, Ivaga is the green place. Right, it's not really. Yeah, you passed it. <laughs> we passed <What>? it. <laughs> like there's a difference between horror and tragic. That was definitely tragic. Yeah, yeah. I definitely want to see uh, what they do as far as um, you know with these characters. We still have. 20 plus years until Aliens, so anything could happen in that 20 years. Yeah. Um, you know, Aliens jumps around because people go into cryo sleep, so time yeah. is kind of just out the window. It's like, oh, it's yeah. 60 years. It's like, oh, yeah. wow. Like, you know what I mean? So when you're dealing with sci fi films like this, time is kind of just, as Kage said, it's expendable. Time mm-hmm. is just there. Mm-hmm. It's a property within the film, it's a theme, but it's not like, Okay, this has to happen right but now. But I wonder right what now. I Things, wonder gaps. how they would. You're gonna have to eventually come back to uh, present time. As far as well, because what? like uh, the the are the to m- match the timeline of aliens. Is well, that what you well, mean? Well, like we okay, we had covenant. You got to do something. 
after so you're saying that. they need to actually figure out how Jump you to get the to the derelict hitting LV-426? Yeah. Well, they could do that, but they kind of already messed that up because this movie's after Covenant. So they're not going to go back and course correct that. Yeah. This is the course correction. Yeah. This is forget about Alien Covenant. That didn't happen. Prometheus happened, but Alien Covenant didn't really happen. Right. Oh, and I, I had this conversation it. with somebody. They were talking about the Alien Covenant stuff, and I was like, well, yeah, that, but that doesn't explain how the derelict got to LV-426 mm-hmm. because David didn't leave an LV, or he didn't leave that planet, right, which mm-hmm. really Scott calls paradise. He didn't leave that planet on that derelict. He left on that cargo ship. Now, one thing I will, I will so say that... So who got on the, on the derelict and flew it to LV-426? Like, you know what I mean? The who's only- in that ship or who's in, mm-hmm. that, who's in that seat? Who's in that jockey seat? The only no thing knows, that you can so really I... say that ties any in any which way right. or whatever to Covenant um, is the conversations that they always have in regards to the xenomorph being a perfect organism, specimen, organism, perfect organism, a perfectly you know undestroyable, self repairing, you know whatever. You know, basically, it, so there's it, themes it of that, but I would attribute into, that. I would well, attribute that more to Alien because he says that in Alien. Well, no, he says that in Alien, but what I'm getting at is that would be the only way you could tie it because David's whole thing was, "I'm going to create you know how I this tied perfect it? thing." You know how I tied it? I talked to him about it, and it's loose, but it's the fact that you actually see two androids that are uh, basically the same. Mm. That's only a Covenant thing. You never see that in any other Alien. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. So that was the only thing yeah. to me that was like visually. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, a connection. But what you said did make sense because yeah. that was David's whole shtick. Yeah, his whole shtick was creating the perfect. That's why he's doing his research. And right. so, I mean, if if you have if you have other synthetics sitting there making the same observation Correct. and saying like, oh yeah, man, this is perfect. Like we don't know, we should all bow down and worship this awesome creature because it is the perfect organism. Right, so right, you right. could sit there and you could make that argument that that's how it would tie back to David yeah. um, just because he was so stuck on creating the perfect um, right. organism. So Well, he's, he was a loyal Wayland employee, For essentially. Sure. <laughs> right. They're we're like, going to, we're going to, like we're, we're right going to, we're going to complete the objective yeah, and damn yeah. everybody on this <laughs> ship. Exactly. We're going to get it done. I don't care if the entire crew is dead. Well, I will is, carry. I don't want to, I don't want to talk about your objective uh, 937 or something. Uh, That's what it is on Alien. I think this one's objective like 939 like or something like that. Yeah. But <laughs> a lot of like, what is objective 937? <laughs> it's one of those. It's something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think this is a movie that we can talk more about, especially we can give up some spoilers maybe in the future, but it's only been out for two weeks. We're not trying to give up too many spoilers. Yeah, well, people uh, we go are there. being mindful, but I think we will kind of revisit this possibly in the future. I would, I would challenge then, anybody you know. who, who has not seen this yet and plans to watch yeah. it, you know, look out for the Easter eggs because they did mm-hmm. put quite a few in there for people. And if you're and if you're like a true fan of the series, you know they they are gonna do you some fan service. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you know just keep an eye out for it. But ultimately, you know the movie I would say is definitely one that if you if you liked if you liked the first two films, this is this is kind of paying a little bit of homage to right. to those two uh, films. Um, there's a lot of back to the roots. Yeah, a lot of back to back to the original kind of storyline and. Um, you know, flow of uh, the film itself. So you've you've got a lot of good things in there. They again, they just try and pull you in visually, which right. I think they did a really great job. And and again, if you're somebody like me, you got a, a few little jump scares in there for you. You know, to keep you on your toes, yeah. keep you awake. I give you a pass. <laughs> I've seen way worse jump scares than that. It both, like in the, in the theater. Trust for me, sure. you're good. <laughs> Yeah, so with that being said, guys, we're actually going to close the uh, podcast for this uh, topic. But then we're going to actually continue. So we're going to do a part two. And this one's really going to go into our review of The Crow. So I didn't want to really mix it up too much with Alien and then going into The Crow. Kind of running long here. Uh, I just wanted to keep it really focused on Alien. So, you know, if you guys are excited about Alien, this is going to be the episode for that. Go watch Alien Romulus. Help them get that box office up. I do want to see an extension of this story. I think everybody here is open to that. Um, So with that being said, go watch Alien Romulus. Buttons, you got anything else to add? No, I think that's a Kage, before we go to the next topic here. Go see it, y'all. All right, guys. Like, subscribe, comment, ring the bell for notifications. Share with a friend. Please share with a friend. And as always, be safe.